Life was good for Renita. Back in 2015, the 30-year-old was on her way to the movies with her boyfriend, Sonny, laughing in care three until it all changed. As she climbed the stairs to the movie theater and reached the top, she found herself gasping for air, barely able to breathe, and her legs were severely swollen. It was indeed a very scary experience that led her immediately to the hospital and to a diagnosis of acute renal failure. The months following her diagnosis were incredibly hard for Renita, but her bright light was her boyfriend, Sonny, who instead of letting Renita break up with him, he asked her to marry him. But at the beginning of 2016, Renita's health plummeted. She got very sick with pneumonia and ended up on life support. And so together, they once again embarked on a new normal, planning and celebrating their wedding around Renita's dialysis. However, in the fall of 2017, Renita got the greatest gift, a kidney transplant, and life became filled with new hope and brightness for her future. But then, COVID-19, and Renita's world was once again turned upside down. Being immunocompromised as a kidney transplant patient meant that she was at much greater risk to get serious complications from the virus. Hear more as Renita shares her experiences with us about how COVID-19 impacted her world. My main ward, I would say, is paranoia. Definitely more paranoid. So now, for example, I literally do not leave my house. Um, unless I have to go do my blood work, I have to go to like a store, I have to go do something, then I will leave my house. So for example, my groceries, I do everything online now. I remember back when this started in 2020, me being immunocompromised, being a transplant patient, I would automatically get into the routine of wearing a mask. And I remember people would stare at me. I'd go to the grocery store. People would stare at me like, this lady's crazy. I remember a gentleman would knock in the elevator with me because I was wearing a face mask. But now face masks are the new normal. <laughs> Mind you, like I said, it's been a few years since my um, transplant. Um, so I'm required to be seen at the kidney clinic in St. Paul's. That's where I'm being seen at um, every three months. So pre-pandemic, um, we would go down to St. Paul's Hospital every three months. You go in, you see everyone, you see your nurses, dietitian, doctors. Um, it's a nice little long wait. <laughs> Um, to see the doctor. So it's usually about a two to three hour time frame that you're at the hospital. Now come pandemic time now, to reduce the amount of exposure you have to see others and COVID, they do virtual visits now. So the personal attention has gone. Convenience is definitely there. I don't have to drive anywhere. Driving, commuting, yes, I'm happy I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> um, so there's always pros and cons to everything. When the pandemic first started and everything was like on such like lockdown and I was paranoid and everything, um, I actually went through a little bit of um, de depression where I was just feeling lonely. Even though I had my husband in the home, you know, my niece and nephew would come over. We still had people, but it just didn't feel normal anymore because I wasn't going to work. I didn't have that communication with my work family, um, my own parents, um, because my mom, had gone through a lot too in the beginning. That's when she was diagnosed with all of her problems. Um, in the beginning of 2020 was when she 
had her heart problems. She was kidney failure, started dialysis. So me physically, I was not able to be there for my mom. Have been someone going through everything, I couldn't support her. I couldn't go to her appointments. They only allowed one person to go with her, which would be my dad. Overall, it was an emotional time. Um, for myself as well, still to this day, I do have those waves where you start to think like, is this really the new normal? There's been so many weddings in our families that have been postponed due to COVID. Um, we had a recent death in the family, my husband's grandma, and that was probably one of the hardest things to experience during COVID is the loss of someone. I turned to social media for outreach. There's so many groups and stuff that help support people. Where pre-pandemic, a lot of stuff was charged. So you wanna to go to meditation class, they charge you. But now everyone does things, you know, no charge to help everyone's mind. So I have, um, I personally have been practicing meditation to just help with that a little bit and just trying to keep active as much as I can. Personally, stretches, yoga, trying to just keep happy. <laughs> I have learned a lot about myself. Um, so, Again, going back to depression and stuff, I've heard about it, I've never experienced it myself because I've always been in a happy environment, happy place, never had to feel being lonely. Even though I have people with me in the home, just that sense of feeling loneliness. Um, I learned another thing, like, you know, mental health is a serious thing. It's not, it's something that's now being talked about more because of COVID, I think. Because um, a lot of people are going through it and I, I hate to say it, but like, you know, suicide rates have gone up. We had a family member commit suicide as well. Mental health is serious. So I have learned, that's one thing that I've learned about myself is just like kidney disease, mental health can happen to anyone. So being more aware of my emotions and things to make me happy if I'm starting to feel down. You know, I'm learning things that pick me up. Starting to feel a little bit down. Okay, you know what? It's raining outside, it's gloomy. Let's turn on some upbeat music and make myself happy. Let's go watch a funny comedy movie. Um, let's go, you know, cuddle with my husband. I don't know, go play with the dogs. Um, I found more things that I can do and I think I've just learned more about myself as an individual than I have pre-pandemic. <laughs> Keep upbeat, um, try to find things, try to find hobbies that keep you occupied, try to, um, you know, don't, one thing that I've learned is trying not to worry about things that haven't happened. So don't worry about things that may never even happen. Live in the moment, live today. Tomorrow is never promised. <laughs> Yesterday is already gone, it's the past. Think about the present. I would say, you know, reach out to family, reach out to friends, support groups. Anyone you can, if you're ever feeling down or lost or you need advice with anything, reach out. Someone's always there to listen. As they say, you have like a solid foundation, 
my husband is that foundation in my life. Honestly, if I didn't have him around during the pandemic, during my whole entire kidney journey, I honestly don't know where I would be right now. Like I personally have, I don't talk about it, but I have, you know, gotten to that point where I was so down in my life. When I was first diagnosed, before I was married and everything, where I was like, you know, it would be easier if I just wasn't in this world anymore. And then after I met my husband, <laughs> It's like someone will still love you, even if you have kidney disease, if you're struggling. There is always someone there. So yes, he is honestly, he is probably one of my biggest supporters through everything. <laughs>